Hey, good to be with you guys today. This is Tyler Standiford. I'm a professor of biomechanics at Utah Valley University. And for the past year, I've been doing a lot of research in my labs as it relates to super speed golf, speed training, and how that influences club head speed, ground reaction forces, and kind of overall ball speed and carry distances as well. Okay, today I'm coming to you from a little bit of a different location. This is my backyard in Utah. And the reason why is because not all of you have the ability to assess your speed gains in a lab like what I show you with my TrackMan simulator. So what I wanted to show you today is how you could set this system up in your own backyard to make sure that you're accurately assessing your speed gains, okay? We know you're gonna gain speed, okay? I've seen that in my research. You're gonna gain about five to 7% in those first five to six weeks of using our product. But I wanna make sure you know exactly how much speed you gain so that you can track that and keep working to be able to gain more and more speed, okay? So, the key to remember about, about all of this is just consistency, okay? And I think it's pretty simple when I explain to you these things, the importance of just keeping that consistency the same, okay? So, the first thing we wanna be consistent in is the measurement device. So you can see here down on the ground, I have my PRGR, okay? And I'm gonna use that to assess my speeds, both pre and post. I'm not gonna switch between one or the other, Whatever I choose for my pre, I wanna make sure I'm using that for my post as well, okay? Also, the setup of the device, that becomes really important, okay? You can see I have it set up on this little turf piece. It doesn't matter if you set it up on a turf piece or not. What matters is that you're consistent in what you do. So I set mine up right on this line. That gives me a target line of where to swing to and always on that turf piece. And then I know I'm at least assessing that speed the exact same way each and every time with that PRGR. With that, some consistency in terms of kind of the club we use to assess our speed gains and how we're utilizing that club, okay? So if you're gonna use a driver to assess your speed gains, you need to use that exact same driver pre as you do post, and you need to do it the same way. Does it matter if you're hitting a ball into a net or not hitting a ball? It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, okay? The last thing I want you to do is assess your speed gains while hitting a ball pre without hitting a ball post or vice versa, okay? So make sure that you use that exact same club, okay? And use it the same way. Last thing I want you to do is maybe compare a green club to a blue club or compare a driver to a three wood and then try and maybe uh, figure out how fast that club's gonna be. Just use the same club, okay? If you're gonna use your driver, use your driver both times. And if you hit a ball, hit a ball. If you don't hit a ball, don't hit a ball, okay? Uh, consistency in kind of the environment, okay? Big one here is shoes and surface, okay? I wanna make sure that if, if this is where I'm gonna assess it in these shoes with this surface, that's how I wanna be assessing my pre and post. You might say, well, Tyler, does it make a difference about my shoes and surface? Yeah, that's what I study. I study the, the golfer's ground uh, foot interaction. It does make a difference, okay? I don't wanna use these shoes on my cement and then go use uh, maybe uh, cleats on my grass for my post assessment, okay? Be consistent in that environment, okay? A big part about that consistency is when we do it, okay? So if you're gonna do your pre-assessment kind of in the morning after you've woke up and had breakfast and gone through a little bit of a warm up, hey, that's a great way to do your post assessment. Don't do your pre-assessment after a round at the end of a long tiring day and your post assessment on a fresh body. Okay, we wanna make sure you're accurately assessing speed gains, so you're not overestimating or underestimating. Each one is gonna cause frustration and problems for you, okay? So, be consistent in the warm-up. I think this is such a big piece of it, okay? So, you know, if, if I take my, you know, my pre-speed gains, and all I do is come out and just kind of, you know, twist a little bit, stand up, and take a swing, and call that my pre-swing gain, okay? That's going to be very different than if I actually go through a nice dynamic warm up. I swing my super speed clubs a little bit, build some intensity with my driver, maybe five to seven swings, trying to get that up to maybe three or four that I'm going to measure and take an average of when I'm going all out. Okay, make sure that warm up is the same. We know speed will be affected by what you do in that warm up. Okay, so make sure that's as consistent as possible. Okay, I think the last piece to remember is the intent. Okay. Make sure the intent of those swings you're measuring are exactly the same, okay? And that means if I'm gonna go all out capacity with my pre, you know, really moving, really kind of getting into that, okay? That's how I want my post assessment to be, okay? I don't wanna take my pre-assessment, you know, like I'm 
I don't know, hitting a ball with OB left and, and water right, and my post assessment like a wide open downhill par five. Okay, so make sure that the consistency of the intensity is the same, okay? What I like to do is just tell golfers, swing as fast as you possibly can, because that's at least kind of a, an intensity that they can think of and draw upon the next time, as opposed to, hey, just give me a nice, good, solid drive, right? That's a little bit more subjective, and they may have some issues with that in terms of being able to recreate that intensity pre and post, okay? So again, consistency is key with the environment, the measuring device, uh, the warm-up, uh, the intensity of the swing, the club we're using, okay? Uh, using a golf club pre and a golf club uh, glove post, okay? These are all keys that will help you assess your speed gains accurately.